hey guys what's up so today i'm going to start one of the important topic like how we can integrate the database with the selenium framework or how we can do a database testing so both the topic will be covered uh, with this video so before jumping into that uh, this is brief about me i come from mechanical background and i'm from bihar Mujapurpur. i have my facebook page and youtube channel so you guys can uh, ask me the questions on my facebook page i will try to answer all and the youtube channel where you guys can subscribe my channel and the locations github where you can get my source code so we will start with mysql db because as we know that it's open source and it's very easy uh, not easy actually uh, it's uh, easily available and we can work with that and the same concept will work out in all the database so quickly first i will show you how you can install mysql in your system so for a windows people you need to know this download locations https dev mysql.com slash downloads slash installer so this is the locations from there you can download the mysql installer okay so once you will come to these locations right my sql inst installer if you'll come down here you have uh, installer mysql installer so first one you have mysql web community and second one is mysql installer community so you go for this mysql installer community click on download so once you click on download the msi file will get downloaded in your system right so you guys can download from these locations do not forget these locations locations is important once you'll download in your download folder you'll get something like this mysql installer community 5.7.18 now once this is downloaded do a double click when we do a double click click on run so it will start running the mysql click on yes uh, one pop-up will come this pop-up will come here you can select full so when you select on full and you can go for next so when you go for next these are the these are the requirement i mean these are the uh, the data will get downloaded with with mysql check requirement so you can check your requirement what is your uh, requirement you have right uh, and what are the things you want to install so as of now uh, what i will do is i will skip this part okay so if you really want to install this you can install that that is the reason it says that the following products have uh, failing requirements the installation will attempt to resolve some of the of this automatically requirement marked as a manual cannot be resolved automatically click on these items try and resolve them so maybe uh, in my system some of the things will be failing otherwise you know by default it should be checked now go to the next so here it says that one or one or more product requirements have not been satisfied those products for missing requirements will not be installed upgrade do not wish to do that right so we can do that yes then we will come to this page once we will come to this page we can click on execute so click on the execute right so when we click on the execute one by one uh, the installations will happen right so some of the installations will fail in my system because of system requirements it will not fail in your system guys because this is my uh, vm where uh, a lot of things are not installed but that's fine that's not a problem we will wait for the installations these are the things will get installed mysql notifier connector dotnet connector documentations and simple examples so these are things will get installed in my system one got failed that's fine no issue let it failed so since installation is going on i'll talk about little bit about database testing so what happens irrespective of any company you go for uh, whenever we do any automation selenium automations finally your all the data will be stored into the database so let's say you are doing a registration or you are doing a login so when you do a login to once you do login login will be successful to make sure that whether this username password is present in the db or not you can make a db call and you can get the information from the db that username password like whether this username password exists in the database or not or let's say some verifications where uh, let's say product price so you have a e-commerce application and you bought the product so when you go to the payment page you have a price so that price again it comes from the either data base or 
from some storage system right so what we can do we can make a query to the database for this product what is the price and we can get the price i'm just giving an example similarly let's say banking applications you are working for let's say how many amount you have for the particular account so whatever is showing on the ui same thing you can make a db call and you can cross check like whether the data is in sync or not right sometimes data will come from the cache memory like it will be cached in your browser it will not get refreshed in the db the data will be different so we need to make sure click on next click on next no compatible server was found i will need to cancel this wizard or install one so it says that no server is found that's fine here now give us the credential we should need to have a root privilege so i will do here root and i will keep here password check but actually it will not get configured because as i say in my system i'll have some issue but you guys when you do next it will get installed and again you click on next and then uh, once you go to this so once this will done when you click on next you will come to apply configuration page where you can change the port on which page you on which port you want mysql mysql should run okay after that automatically your mysql will run i have a document also you guys can follow this document uh, this document is very handy so this is the installations locations which i have given then once you start it will go like this one by one okay and one by one the installations will happen you will select the full and here uh, installations path will automatically it will take program files so then check requirements so automatic automatically it will be checked check checked if you have in your system right then when we go to this installation part what happens is uh, uh, when you click on execute one by one these things will get downloaded in your system everything will get downloaded and ultimately you can see all green symbols here so once you see green symbols then click again the next button when you click the next button you have something called configurations right so this page will show again click on next so when we click on next what happens is you will come to this page so here when you come to this page you can supply the port number right so by default by default what happens is uh, uh, choose config type and mysql port 3006 by default right so by default will be 3 uh, sorry it should be 3306 okay it's, it's a mistake here 3 uh, sorry here it's a mistake it should be 3306 by default it will take the port once this is done you will come to this configuration here you can give a username and password which you want to use to connect the database so once this is done right then uh, again you choose a password for the root account and note that the password download and keep it the sec uh, securely right because you want to use it and once this is done then again start the mysql server at system startup so this options actually you can check in so when you check in these options what will happen the moment you will start your system your my uh, sql server will get started so when these options comes which means you know automatically your my sql server will start every time whenever you start right this is your configuration part and by uh, by this your configurations will be done right so this document anyways i will i will uh, make sure that it will be available to some of my locations so that you guys can refer or even in fact you can google it like how to install my uh, sql it's not a big deal it's a small activity which you guys can do that okay so i'll be using mac system i don't have a windows system that is the reason you know a lot of things are failing i was running in the vm so once you'll install my sql server then what you can install is uh, you can install mysql workbench also so from google you can download mysql workbench so mysql workbench uh, will help you so i'll show you what you, uh, from where you guys will get it so this mysql workbench basically uh, here so mysql workbench right so when you click on that you can download this this is the design 
and uh, there will be uh, download locations so it will look like this okay that anyways i will show you so you guys can you know download now mysql workbench you guys can download right so once you will download this mysql workbench basically you can connect your db through this and it will work as a interface it will work as a editor right and if you look at the screenshot these are the screenshot they have given uh, i think we cannot we cannot yeah this is the screenshot that's how it will look like mysql workbench where uh, you can connect your uh, running mysql db right so your database whatever you have installed in your system you can connect to this right so the moment you will install when and when you do double click on that automatically you can see that your database will get deducted i will show you in my system so i have mysql installed so what i will do is i'll go for uh, workbench so i'll go for my uh, sql workbench right so here this is the one so i'll click on that the moment i'll click on that what happens you can see that this is my uh, my sql so local instance 3306 it is running on 3306 i'll do a double click when i do a double click it will ask my password so i will supply the root password and then i'll click on ok so when i will click on ok this is your uh, interface so that's how mysql workbench will look like right then uh, here you can create a db okay you can create a db so if you look at here i have created one db called customer in the customer i have created table called register right so this we have a table register and this is when you select this and when you click on this what happens is you have data in this table which we can see that right so this is our table data now if you want to create if you want to create any db okay so let's say you want to create one database here right so it's pretty simple uh, what you can do is you can go here uh, here so you click on this right and you can create a new schema so let's say uh, not a schema i don't want to create the schema uh, don't save uh, here come here and click on this so table this is uh, will give you the information about your current table but i want to create a new one so to do that uh, what we can do is there's an option here through which we can create a database table import wizard send to scale create a schema search table refresh filter so actually okay let me create one schema let's see what happens so i'll create one schema no i don't want to create customer schema let me close this and sql sql here what we have create a new view here we have created a new table create a new schema in the connected server in the selected object open sql script and open a new sql tab so i used to see options here uh, db name right click sys right click or uh, basically uh, we can use one query also okay to create a, a i mean table we can use a query so we can google it okay what we can do to create a db in sql so create a table create database in mysql so click on here when we click on here we can go to w3 school and we can get a query from here so create database and just give a database name so this is this is the simplest one okay instead of doing r and d uh, we can just let's say create database and here we can let's say if we give a database called product okay so one database should get created right so product will get created yeah product is got created now when we refresh this schema here right we can see that one product is got created here and you can create a table if you feel like you can create a table now and you can create a table so whatever table you want to create you can 
create a table here actually you can let's say okay let me show you by creating one table so let's say table name i will give let's say user it's a user table and what we will do is so we will give a column name so here let's say i will give first name where care okay and then here i will give last name where care and then i will give here salary and i will change this to uh, i'll change this to int okay and i don't want to keep any primary key and all that so this will get created once this is created i will click here apply so when i'll click on apply so execute as sql statement now click on close so what will happen now if you'll go to this table and if you'll do select a star from the table let's say when you do select a star from table right not table basically user when we do user user is our table and when we run this we should see the information so it says that table customer dot user does not exist so not customer dot we have to we have to write here product because pro, it comes under product so product table has this see here you can see that it has null 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 there is no record at all right why because product is a different table all together right and it has not no uh, it has no record as of now so that's how uh, guys we can uh, we can basically uh, add the data so let's say here if i write a b c and here if i write d e f and let's say here i'll write a salary of of let's say 20000 so now when we run this query we should uh, get the data oh i didn't do commit so we should do commit also once you add a data you should do a commit then only will get added right so i will we will see that through query through code how we can do that so till here we are done like installation is done i have shown you how we can create a database product and then how you, uh, in the table you can create a table called user so you have created a table and as of now assume that this table has no data okay so till here we are good the table has no data similarly customer i have created a table it has a customer database has a table registration this guy will have some data okay so this registration basically it has a data when you do uh, right click and select row limit 100 so this registration has some data and registration has a column id name and profession okay so three things registration has now i will show you with the coding part in my next video so thank you guys thank you for watching this hope you guys will be able to install and configure mysql uh, there are a lot of uh, youtube actually support you have you guys can do that but i don't have windows system otherwise i would have shown to you thank you guys thank you for watching this hope you like this video and if you like this video hit like button and subscribe to my youtube channel thank you once again guys